Congratulations, Mr. Naka! Sonic the Hedgehog was a great success and made us so much money! So, here's what we want you to do. Screw you anyway! We don't need you! We can make a Sonic game just fine without you! Get, uh, get, get, get Studio Junior on the line. We're gonna need animators. Good evening, Mr. Yuzinaka. Would you be interested in making a Sonic game on behalf of Sega of America? America! Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Released in 1992 was the long-awaited video game sequel to Sega's newest and biggest star, Sonic. Developed by Sega Technical Institute, an American branch that worked on games for the Sega Genesis, Sonic 2 had a very interesting development behind it. Despite the overwhelming success of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega wasn't too sure that making a sequel so soon would blow over too well with people. And after a few fights between mom and dad, Sonic was quickly handed off to the little orphanage of the free. California! The team at Sega Technical Institute wanted Sonic 2 to be even faster than before, and improve upon the core of the original game. One of these additions being Sonic's new sidekick and best friend, Miles Prower. Or his nickname, Tails. You get it? It's because it's, it's, it's funny because he's fast. Based off the Japanese Kitsune, a fox and multiple tails, Tails was added to be a buddy to follow you wherever you go and help you tear through enemies. For better or worse, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 sold extremely well and grossed over $450 million in 1992. That's a lot of money! Released in November of that year, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was seen to be a major improvement over the original game. With critics praising the game's visuals, gameplay, and music, Sonic 2 was shaping up to be an absolute home run for Sega. I mean, all this money is cool and all, but that still doesn't make you better than us. Come on, Sonic and this form, let's get out of here. Please kill me. Starting the game up, we're greeted by that all too familiar jingle with an updated title screen. And can I just say, seeing this again is really bringing back memories. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was one, if not the first video game I technically played and owned myself. Not in the traditional sense anyway. My parents bought me a plug and play Sega Mega Drive by Radica, featuring six games including Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Echo the Dolphin, Alex Kidd, G Gain Ground, the Ooze. I mean, not to say these other games are bad, but when you have this sparkling gem sitting alongside the rest, you really just gotta take a first look and go, Oh, this guy in here. Hitting start, we're taken to Emerald Hill Zone. Green Hill Zone's flashy younger brother. It has all the old tropes of Green Hill Zone, but with much more fluidity to it. And BOY IS IT FAST! Another thing to note about this game is the implementation of the new Spin Dash. Hold down and press the jump button to rev up and blast off to get the full speed in no time. The Spin Dash was exactly what a game like Sonic was needing. A lot of times, Sonic 1 felt sluggish. Having to run a good bit to build that momentum until you inevitably get hit and have to build that speed up again? It got really tiring. Really fast. But the spin dash. Get hit? Doesn't matter, rev up and blast right back off again. Uh oh, boss time and uh... Oh, oh okay, I guess it's dead then. Chemical plant zone is next and... Oh my sweet merciful angels, look at this zone. This zone, right here, is generally one of the best levels created in Sonic history, and I will stand by that! This level is just so full of colour, despite being a very mechanical looking zone. And we all know how that ends up, usually. With interesting enemy types, fun pipe segments, and- HOLY sh SLOW DOWN! There's a reason why Chemical Plant Zone is considered the staple second zone for Sonic. Green Hill Zone is level 1, Chemical Plant Zone is level 2. It's like poetry. The speed felt in this level is like no other. And when you're going so fast that the game is genuinely struggling to try and keep up with you, that's how you know you found a fun level. As well as the level design is incredible, with multiple branching paths that all lead to the same areas, but still giving you that consistent fast-paced action. Mwah. I forgot to mention as well that this zone is... <clears throat> a water level. But they made it fun! Water levels can be fun! I think? So yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it, Labyrinth Zone. Uh-oh, boss time and... Uh, it, it's dead. Next up, Aquatic Rune. Another water level, but damn is it good. You can literally play this whole zone all the way through without touching an inch of water, which is... Yeah, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Too bad I suck! One thing to note about Sonic 2's zones compared to Sonic 1's is the sheer abundance of them. With Sonic 1, you had six zones with three acts each. 
But Sonic 2, you have 10 zones with two acts each. Kinda. Wing Fortress, Sky Chase, and Death Egg are just troubled children. And don't worry. I'll get to Metropolis Zone later! One reason this game keeps you hooked more than the original, in my opinion, is it just doesn't linger too much on one level design. And it doesn't hold you ransom like Marble Zone! It introduces to you a concept early in the zone, and plays more into it the further you get into the level, and the level after it. Then after it's done, it kisses you on the cheek and leaves you on your merry way. Uh-oh, boss time and... Uh... <clears throat> Boss time? <clears throat> Boss time! Oh, there we go. Okay. On to Casino Night! A fan favorite level when it comes to the overall series. What a visually stunning level, and a really good concept as well. One so good, it will inspire a whole new game of its own. Taking Sonic, making him into a pinball, and firing him around for free points of rings, that's f***ing genius. Though the bouncing around the place without much freedom can be a little, uh, annoying. This is a very fun level, and I can see why so many people enjoy it. Especially with its fantastic ball. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Okay, anyway, Hilltop Zone. It's green and emerald hill zone. But spicy! Uh, I mean, there's not much to say about the zone. Visually, it's okay with the whole zone taking place on the mountain range. Or, uh, hilltop, I guess. Some fun enemies like these robo police swords you can use as platforms and these seesaws that are kind of fun but remind me of Starlight Zone. But other than that, it's just an okay zone. This segment is pretty cool where you need to race to the top of the inner mountain or be singed by the lava. The zone was referenced in the movie for two seconds. That's pretty neat. Okay, okay, just move on, just move on. Mystic Cave Zone! Now this is a level with an atmosphere completely new to the Genesis Sonic games. This dank, sparkly-ass cave connected with the old mineshaft rails and bridges, along with rocks trying to crush you at any given point, all the while some of the funkiest cave music you'll ever hear in your life plays in the background. It's a really cool-looking zone, in my opinion, and it really stands out in terms of visuals and especially its music in the game. As well as it stands out for its notorious death pit. But Meta, why is it called the death pit? You see this switch? We need to jump over this chasm to hit that switch. However, if you completely miss the jump or go zooming off the edge like a toddler on crack, you're going straight to the death pit. A long pit full of nothing but spikes. I guarantee death. No, you can't jump out. Cry about it. I miss Hidden Palace Zone. Anyway, let's just fight the ball. Oh, come on, dude! Seriously! Oil Ocean? Oh, God, it's Oil Ocean! I mean, it's not a bad level by any means. I really like the visuals and the music of this one. As well, it's a really cool concept. But, God, does it seem like this zone drags on. And it's not even Act 1. I think Act 1 is fine. I have a serious problem with Act 2, though. I feel like Oil Ocean suffers too much from a Sonic the Hedgehog 1 syndrome, where we had all these great fast-paced levels to test your speed on and only to be stopped by... I don't even know what these are. I think someone just put a plate in the lit stove and now they go... The zone sprawls on upwards for quite a while and it can get really disorientating at times. Trust me, I've been playing this game for nearly two decades and I still don't know how to traverse this thing. Pseudo Supersonic is pretty cool. For some reason, clipping into this pipe right here gives you all the abilities of Supersonic. Such as the increased jump height and speed without even having a form. <sighs> okay, moving on. No! Metropolis Zone is... Yeah, it, it's not fun at all. It's a really tough and annoying zone with some of the most irritating enemies the game has to offer. Especially when they place them in such an area that I just... F***ed with everything! Sprinkle in some difficult platforming, areas that loop around, and definitely... Sh Metropolis Zone is such a slap in the nuts compared to the other stages. This wouldn't really be a problem for me since it's this game's version of the Scrap Brain Zone. But the problem is, this isn't the last level. There's a whole three more zones after this one. As well as this, just so we can rub lemon and salt in that gaping wound of yours, this zone has... Wait for it. Three acts. Not two like the rest of the levels. Three. 
at least I can at least cry my eyes out to some tunes, because this zone's music goes f***ing hard. Oh, we're on a plane now. That's... cool. Welcome to Wing Fortress Zone. Home of acrophobia and sweaty palms. Tough platforming, instant deaths and... Oh, that just cut five minutes off the stage. Wing Fortress can end up being the graveyard for most runs of Sonic 2. Not to mention, this boss can be very annoying. With the precise platforming given to you throughout the whole stage built into the boss itself. All the while Robotnik's just standing there giggling at you like the conniving f*** he is. Once you beat the boss, Robotnik tries to make a break for it inside of his rocket ship. And Sonic being the crazy bastard he is, clings onto the thing, gets sent into space along with it, and enters the final zone of the game. Death Egg Zone. The final stand against Robotnik inside his very own Star Wars ripoff. First thing you'll notice about this level, there's no rings! Yep, good luck and boy that fella does not look friendly. Silver Sonic, the first robotic Sonic even predating Metal Sonic, flies in from the top of the screen and tears his way around the boss room with his chainsaw-like spikes. With Silver Sonic defeated, we can finally catch Eggman and beat the game. Okay, why is he so fast? The Death Egg Robot, the final boss of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and one of the most iconic bosses of Sonic and video game history. No rings, no tails, just you and him. This is an incredibly tough boss, and to beat it, patience is definitely the key. Hit him whenever he stops moving, or looks vulnerable enough to get a whack in. Don't, and then die. Start over, fight Silver Sonic, and go again. This fight's difficulty stems from the lack of rings, as well as the weak points on his body being barely or not even at all apparent. But once you manage to trudge through the fight, the mech explodes into pieces, along with the zone, as Sonic runs as fast as he can to the exit. And in a flash of light, he falls to his death! <laughs> And that was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Ah, wow. What a game. What are you looking at me like that for? Am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, that's right! Two player mode! Let's go boys! Prepare your optician appointments and get ready to squint! Cause we're playing this all night! Okay, okay. All jokes aside, the real meat and potatoes of this game is the introduction of Super Sonic. A transformation given to anyone who manages to beat all seven special stages while progressing through the game. Hey, good luck with that, because these going to be f***ing rough. When 50 rings are gathered, all you have to do is jump and BOOM! That flashy yellow blasts in and you've transformed into the Invincible Super Sonic! A form that has double the speed, double the jump height, and is completely invulnerable to damage. Overall, Sonic 2 is a great game, and I understand why a lot of people hold it to such high regard. Even to the point where people call it one of the best Sonic the Hedgehog games ever made. It greatly improves the flaws of the first game, while also building upon the stuff that the original was so great for. But yeah, this is a great Sonic game, and I dare say it's almost the perfect Sonic game for anyone who's looking to get into the series. Fun platforming with high speed action, and great levels with an amazing soundtrack. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 gets a gold star from me. Tastes like 90s jean jackets.